Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Ride the Rails along with the Australia and Canada expansion map. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play, and I will be showing one full game today with a couple of fast forwards through some of the rounds. Now, if you enjoy this video, then please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. And if you'd like to directly support this channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them have great bonuses like voting on some videos that I film each month and getting early access to watch some videos without the advertisements. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections down below in a pinned comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview, and this is Ride the Rails with the Australia map expansion. There is a Canada map on the backside of this board, and for today's tutorial, I will be teaching Ride the Rails alongside the extra rules that come specifically with the Australia map. What's going on in this game is there are six different railroad companies that are trying to move passengers from one location to another all across this part of the country. The way this works is in each of the game's six rounds, every player will take one new stock, and that will be one of the trains from that company that goes onto their board. Then each player is going to lay trains out for companies they have stock in, and then every player is going to move one of these passenger tokens along a set of train tracks, and then depending on the color of tracks used, we will move these tokens up, and then all players who have stocks in the trains that were used for this transportation will gain money for it. The active player will also gain more money depending on the overall distance that that passenger went regardless of the train company colors that they traveled through. Now we're going to do all of that six times and as the game goes on new railroad companies will become available and once the game is over the player who has the most money in the form of points along the outside will be the winner. The final thing to cover in the overview is a special mechanic that comes in with the Australia map. Now that is long distance trains over here in the west going to Perth and over there in the east going to Brisbane. And these are much slower to build out and the player who finalizes that connection will get a large cash payout for their efforts. Well, I think it's now time to start playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player over here. Now, in the game, we are going to play through six overall rounds, and within each round, there are going to be three phases, and all players are going to complete one phase before we move on to the next. Let's go ahead and start things off with the first round of the game. It says that all players are now going to acquire one stock. Now, as you can see right here, it says the order will go from the big dollar sign to the small dollar sign, which means the order of stock purchase will be from the right over to the left. That means the blue player can decide which stock they want to acquire first. With that in mind, let's focus back over here on the round track, because the row that this round token is in tells all of us which of the train companies players can acquire a stock in. That means in the very first round of the game, players can only acquire a red or a blue stock, but once we get into the second round of the game, players can acquire a red, a blue, or an orange. So, blue has to acquire a blue or red stock, and it's worth emphasizing that the color of these railroads are not matched up with the player colors in any way. That being said, the blue player decides they do want a blue stock, so they're going to take one of these train tokens, and if there were none of these train tokens left, then no players would be able to take any more stocks in it, because each stock is represented with one of these train tokens. Next up, blue can place this stock onto their player board, and they're going to put it into the associated color row as far left as they can. So that will go right over there, and the reason these have different lengths is because the game is going to take place over six rounds. So if a player was to take blue stock in every round of the game, they would fill this row out entirely, and some of the other railroad companies don't become available until later, so no player will be able to have more than three purple shares, for example, because the purple shares become available. Well, now the white player can take a stock, and they've decided to invest in the red railroad company. So they can place this here, and now the green player can take a red or blue stock. And they've also decided to invest in red. And now we are the last ones to acquire a stock, and it can be red or blue. Currently, two players have red stock and one player has blue. So if we took a red stock, then the three of us could work together to really run that red railroad significantly, or we could take a blue stock to team up with the blue player a bit and work together with them. For now, I think I like the idea of the blue stock, so let's go ahead and take one of these train tokens, and we can place that onto our player board. 
Now that we have all acquired one new stock, we can move it into the second phase of the round where players from the left to the right on the turn order track can lay track. That means that we get to lay track first, and the way this works is we can lay track down for each of the companies we have at least one share in, and the number of track tokens we can lay will vary with the player count. This is a four-player game, which means we can lay up to five track tokens. But it is worth noting that if even one of those tokens gets placed into a mountain area, then the amount we can lay is reduced by two. So that means we would be able to lay up to three tokens total if any of those are placed into the mountains. But we could place all three of them into the mountains if we wanted to. It's also worth noting you can place up to one train into the long distance tracks. And I'll describe the details of how that works later on. So let's focus over here. And currently we only have stocks in the blue company, which means we can only lay blue track. Currently, the Blue Railroad has no track on the board, and the first track for each company has to go down into a city that has that company's color on it. When playing with the Australia map, there is one city option for the first four railroads that we have access to in the game. Those are the Blue and Red Railroads at the start, then the Orange and Yellow Railroads will be brought in, and later on in the game, when a Purple Railroad can start, it can begin in any of these spots that show purple, and the same goes for the Black Railroad Company. Now there is a restriction overall in this game, and that is that no hex can have more than two train tokens on it, and no hex can ever have more than one train of a single railroad company's type. That means in the future, if a purple or black company wants to build into one of these cities, it cannot already be full of two other trains, because then obviously no other trains would fit into that hex. Now once again, we can only lay blue track, and blue track must start over here in Melbourne. So let's place our first out of up to five track into the city of Melbourne. We can do that by taking one of these blue railroad tokens and we place it into that city. And then we will have up to four more placements that we can do. And I don't see a reason not to place all four. So I'm just going to take all four of the other track right now. And when we focus back over here, obviously the first track has to go into Melbourne. Now, every future track of a railroad's color must be adjacent to another one of that railroad's tokens. That means a second track that we want to lay must be adjacent to this first one. And as you can see, one of those spots is a mountain hex. Once again, if any of these are built into a mountain hex, then the overall amount of builds that we have is reduced by two. So if we place this here, then we could only place at most one other railroad down. I don't think that makes sense because I would like to place all four of these. And let's go ahead and put the second one here. We'll put the third one over there, which will connect that city. The fourth one can go over here. And then let's place the fifth one onto that spot. So that means we have connected up two other cities to Melbourne. We have placed five track, which means we cannot place any more. And I would like to emphasize that this is entirely optional. We could have placed zero track if we wanted, and we also could have split this up amongst multiple companies if we had shares in multiple companies. So if we had red and blue stock, we could have placed three blue and two red if that was something that we wanted to do in the moment. Now, obviously, we just placed all five of the blues down, and now it's time for the green player to potentially lay track. The green player currently only has red stock, which means they can lay red track, and the very first red track must go into Sydney. After that, the green player has decided that they are going to skirt around the outside of these mountains. They don't want to pay the minus two placement penalty by going into them. So they are going to place this train there. The third one is going to go there. The fourth one will connect this city up. And the fifth one is going to go over there. So it's not quite connecting to that city there. After that, the white player can lay track. And they also only have red stock. So they can lay up to five of those tracks down. After considering it, the white player wants to extend this route. They want to connect that city, and then they are going to head into the east. They'll go there, and then there to connect that city, and these two other placements will connect yet another one to the red line. So that is five cities currently connected on this line, and it is worth noting that there are just 27 of each of the railroad tokens. So if the players wanted to be a little more uh, reserved with using these lines, hoping to get out farther into the map, they might have gone across these mountains here, but it appears that's not what they decided to do. After that, the blue player can lay blue railroad track, and it appears they want to head over towards the west, and they are going to place all five of these down. By doing that, they've connected a couple more cities to the blue line. Well, we're now done with the second phase of the turn, so we can move into the third and final phase, where each player in turn order from left to right is going to move one passenger along a set of railroad links. 
A link is defined as when you have two cities that have railroad tokens of the same color going from one city to the next with an unbroken chain. That means this right here is a link and that one over there is a link, but right now this is not a link because that railroad has not quite made it to this city here. Well, we get to go first since our token is farthest to the left. And now we can choose any passenger on the board that has a valid link to move, and we can move it as far along a set of links as we want. Now, it's worth noting that no passenger can ever move through the same hex multiple times, so you cannot loop around with this path. Now, I think let's go ahead and start with this passenger here who is in Melbourne, and we can move to this link right over here. We can continue to move across links, and as you can see from this city, we can move to that city there using these two, or we can move to this city and then that city, and I think that is what we should do because the more links that we cross, the more money that we will get. So we are going to go from Melbourne all the way over to this city here, and as you can see, we went across one, two, three, four blue links. Now the color is important because we now can look over here and take the blue token and move it up to the fourth spot to show that four blue links were passed through. If this passenger had gone through any other color links, then we would move those color tokens up on this track equal to the number of links of that color that the passenger went through. In this case, that did not happen. And then what we have to do is move this token up a number of times for the number of new cities that the passenger went through. As you can see, this token is already at the one, and that is meant to be the first city that the passenger was in. So this white token essentially shows you how many cities the passenger has been in, including that starting city. Now we can figure this out by counting the number of links we went through, or we could simply add up the numbers associated with tokens that we moved up already and add that to the one that this was already at. As you can see, we have the blue token at the four and none of the other tokens moved up. So we can add four to this one and move this up to the five. And when we look over here, we can see that passenger did go through one, two, three, four links and they hit five cities overall. Next up, all players can potentially generate money based off of our passenger run. The way this works is every player's share is going to give that player an amount of money equal to the number associated with that railroad company's color token. In this case, the blue railroad is at four, and the blue player over here has one blue share, which means that blue share is worth four money to the blue player. Likewise for us with our one blue share, that is also worth four money, and since we are the active player, we will also get money equal to the position of this white token. That is currently at the five, and again, this number is the amount of cities that the passenger that we moved was in at any point throughout that turn. So once again, blue will get four money and we will get five plus four or nine. The way we gain this money is by moving our indicators on this track around the outside of the board. And it's worth noting that players never spend money in this game. So these are effectively victory points. The player who has the most money at the end of the game will be the winner. We are done moving a passenger so we can reset these tokens. And now the green player can go. They've decided to move this passenger here, and it is going to go through one, two, three, four red links. So the red token will go up to the four, and then they can add four to this one to move that token up to the five spot. And now every player with a red share will get four money for it, and the green player will get five extra money for the number of cities that that passenger saw on this turn. So green will get nine, and white will get four. After this, the white player can go. And they have decided to do essentially the same thing. They will start in this city here and move one, two, three, four red links back over there. So that means this will be at five and four, which means white will gain nine money, bringing them to 13. And then the green player will gain four, which also brings them to 13. Finally, the blue player can go. And they are going to do something that looks pretty familiar. They are going to go from this city here and go through one, two, three, four of the blue links. So that means this will go here and that will go there. That means all of us have actually scored the same amount of money in this overall round, but that is definitely going to start to change as we differentiate our stock portfolios. So let's go ahead and score this up. Blue is going to get five plus four or nine, and we will get four for our one blue stock. That means at the end of this first round, everyone has 13 money. The first round is almost done. And the final thing that we have to do for it is to modify the turn order. The way this works is the player who has the least amount of points will put their turn order token farthest to the left, 
the player who has the next amount of money will then go to the right of the first token and so on for all of the players. If there happens to be a tie, then you reverse the player order. And at the moment, there's actually a four-way tie at 13, which means we can simply swap this around. And that will be the turn order for the next round of the game. Speaking of that, we can now move into that round, and the first thing that we do is acquire stock, going from the right over to the left. That means we get to acquire stock first, and as you can see in the second round, we can acquire red, blue, or orange stock, which is a new one for this round. Out of these options, I think let's invest in the orange company. After that, the green player can take a share, and currently they just have one red, and they've decided to actually double down on red and take another one of that share. Next up, the white player can take a share, and they have one red, and they've decided they would like to take an orange share, so it looks like we won't be the only ones potentially building orange tracks soon. Finally, the blue player can take one stock. They already have one blue stock, and they are going to take another, so they now have two. Well, it's now time to lay track, and the blue player could do this first. They only have blue stock, so they can only lay blue track. After considering their options, they would like to lay all five of this track. One will go up here to connect that city, and then the other four will go down over here, and that is going to connect two more cities into the blue line. Next up, white can lay track, and they have orange and red stock, so they can lay track down for either of those companies, up to a maximum of five total. White does know that the green player has twice as much red stock as they do, so they actually feel compelled to not lay red track to help out the green player. Instead, they are going to focus on orange. The first orange track must go into Adelaide because on the Australia map, this is the only city that shows that orange banner. After that, they've decided to build east. As you can see, that connected two more cities up to the original one. Next up, green can lay track, and they only have red stock, so that is the only type of track they can lay. They seem fine with this, though. They are going to lay five new track out heading to the west. Once again, it looks like the red track is avoiding these mountains. If any of this track was placed into the mountains, then the overall number of track that could be laid would be lowered down by two. We are the last players to lay track, and we can put orange and or blue track down, although we can see the blue player has two blue stock, so I don't feel compelled to lay blue track to give the blue player even more money. Instead, let's focus on orange. That is going to help the white player out, I suppose, but I think that's going to be better for our current position. So let's focus over here, and before we lay any track, I'd now like to talk about this area over here on the west part of the board. Now this is a long distance track, and this is a specific mechanic for the Australia board, and on each of these spots, only one train can be placed in the entire game, and if a train is placed onto one of these spots, then that is the only token that can be placed in the entire build phase. This is illustrated well at the bottom of the board, where you can see while building, you can either lay up to five track in a four player game, or you can lay one track into one of those long distance spots, and that does not change with the player count. I'd also like to point out over here that this shows the regular hexes that can have at most two different trains in them. The uh, long distance hexes can only have one, and I do want to point out these over here. Those are the Australian Alps spots where no trains can ever be placed. As you can see, those are in the southeastern part of this map. Now, the reason we might want to build towards Perth is because the single player who puts a token into that last city will get that amount of money immediately added to their score. Now, as you can see, that is going to be four individual tracks to make it all the way to Perth. And again, if you place a track on one of these, that is the only token you're placing for that entire round. So that means it would take one, two, three, four rounds for a single person to make it all the way to Perth. And remember, the game is only six rounds long. However, in this game, there are currently two people with orange stock. That's going to be us and the white player. That means right now we could lay an orange track on this spot instead of laying more out onto the main board. I think it would only make sense to do that if we had a decent plan to make sure that we were the ones to get the 50 money instead of our opponent. So I think for the moment, let's not do this. Instead, let's lay five orange track. This is an especially good idea considering we have orange stock and a blue stock, and this will let us connect these two rail lines so that we can get revenue for both of those stocks with a single ride the rail action. After placing that fourth track down, you'll notice this city is now full because it has the maximum of two tracks on it. We do have one more orange track that we could place right now, or we could hold onto it and leave it in the supply. 
Remember, if the supply runs out, then no players can gain more stock or lay track for that company. But I do also like the idea of setting the orange company up for more connections in the future. In particular, if we place this track there, it is now two away from three different cities. And I think that's probably going to be a nice flexible spot to leave it. Before we move on, I do want to focus over here in the east, because on the Australia map, there is one other long distance route, and that heads over to Brisbane. Now, this is just two spots long instead of the four towards Perth, and the benefit for placing into Brisbane is 20 money instead of the 50 money bonus that comes from Perth. Well, we're all done laying track, so it's now time to ride the rails, and the blue player can do this first. They have two blue stock, and with that in mind, they are going to focus on running the blue line. They are going to take this passenger and go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue links, which means this blue token can be moved up to the seven, and that, when added to the starting city, puts the city counter token up to eight. After that, all relevant players can gain their revenue. We have one blue stock, so we are going to gain seven money, and the blue player has two blue stock. And when we take a closer look at the player board, you'll notice that this actually helps us out figuring out the revenue that this player will get. You just have to find the rightmost column that has that stock in it and go down until you find the row that matches the payout amount. In this case, that is 7 times 2 or 14 money. Blue will then add to that 14 money this 8 money from the city tracker. So blue will gain 22 money, which brings them from 13 up to 35, and then we gain 7 money, which brings us from 13 up to 20. After that, white can ride the rails. And they currently have orange and red stock, so there is no way for them to get money from both of those stocks on this run, which is a bit unfortunate for them. With that in mind, they have decided to move this passenger across one, two, three, four of the orange links. And that will move this orange up to there. And they could go farther, but they think that would give too much revenue to their opponents, and that would not be worth the extra revenue they would get for visiting more cities. So it looks like their payout is going to be significantly smaller. This is a 4 plus 1, or 5, which means white is going to get 4 plus 5, or 9 money, and we will get 4 money for our 1 orange stock. So white goes up to 22, and we will go up to 24. Next up, it's time for green to ride the rails. And they are going to move this passenger here through one, two, three, four, five of the red links. This token can move up to the six. And now the white player will get five money, and the green player will get ten plus six or sixteen money total. So white will go up to twenty-seven, and green will go up to thirty-one. Alright, it's time for us to ride the rails, and I think let's select this passenger here and go through one, two, three, four, five, six of the blue lines, and then we can continue on going through one, two, three, four of the orange lines. That means that passenger saw six plus four plus one or eleven cities total. Then we can take our payout for this, and that is going to be 11 plus 6 plus 4, or 21 money for us. Now this is going to help out the blue player though. They have 2 of the blue stock, which means they will get 6 times 2, or 12 money for themselves. This means blue will go up to 47, and then when we take our 21, that will bring us from 24 up to 45. Alright, we've now reached the end of the round, and we can now modify the turn order. White has the least points, and then green is next. After that, it's us, and finally the blue player, which means white will go farthest to the left, then green, then us, and then blue on this track. After that, we can move into the third round of the game, and in this round, the yellow company is now available for players to take stock in and then potentially lay track for. Now, I think what I'll do is fast forward through this third round of the game, and we'll pick things back up again at the start of the fourth. Alright, we have now just finished the third round, and the turn order did not actually change. The blue player has extended their lead a little bit so far, and it appears the white player did build one train trying to head towards Perth. There are still three spots to go before that happens, so we'll just have to see if it actually ends up making it there for that 50 money benefit. It is worth noting that there are just eight of these orange tracks left in the supply. So let's officially move into the fourth round, and as you can see, the purple railroad is now available. Now if someone takes a stock in this and then goes to build it, the very first track to be laid down can be put into any city with this purple banner on the map, which is every city except for Perth and Brisbane. 
Now, they cannot start in a city that is already full, and there are a few cities that are full at this point. Well, let's start this off by taking stock, and the blue player gets to take one first. There are just two of these blue trains in the supply still, and blue has decided they want to continue just focusing on this blue company, which has been very lucrative for them so far. So they'll place this over here, and now we can take a stock. And there is one blue stock left, which is tempting, but I think instead of taking that, let's take our first red stock of the game. The reason for that is because currently the blue player does have a lead with this blue railroad over here, and I would rather get a stock that I would like to lean into to actually run passengers on. We did not run a passenger on blue at all in the last round, and I think considering blue has four of that blue stock, none of the rest of the players will run any blue lines for the rest of the game. That being said, the red line has been run a few times so far, and we are quite close to potentially connecting the red line up to this long orange line that we have, and we do have two orange stock. So we could get a very long run, which will of course get us even more revenue for the number of cities that are visited. So let's go ahead and take this red stock. After that, green can take stock, and they see what we're doing and have decided that's probably a good idea. They're going to take an orange stock of their own. The white player is last to take stock, and they figure they'll jump on this one blue stock that is still in the supply. Well, it looks like no one actually decided to start a purple railroad, and when we go into the fifth round, the black railroad will also become available, and it can start on all of the same locations that the purple railroad can. Alright, let's now start laying track, and the white player gets to do this first. It appears they want to continue on this Perth potential plan. They are going to lay one track down heading towards Perth, and that is their entire laying action because they decided to go on a long distance track. After that, green can lay track, and they are going to focus on the yellow railroad. After considering the options, they are going to head up and connect this city, and then head over to the west. So that connected two cities total to the yellow line. We are next to build, and considering we have two orange stocks, I think that's the railroad we should focus on. In particular, I think let's make a connection between this orange line and the yellow line. We don't really care about yellow at this point, but we would like to get over to the red because we do have a red stock. So let's go ahead and place some orange out. And that is four track total, so we could lay one more. At the moment, there are just two of the orange track left, though. And that is what is required to make it to Perth. So we could place one of these so that no one would get this benefit, or we could not, and maybe try to angle things so that we could be the ones to gain this benefit later on in the game. I think it's probably going to be worth it to leave that as an option for the moment. We can, of course, lay one more track down, though, and if it's not going to be orange, then it will be blue or red because those are our other stocks. There are no blue trains over here, so I figure let's put a single red down, and we can connect this city up by placing it there. At the moment, this doesn't really help things out, because when you ride the rails, you can never visit the same hex twice. But if another red is placed there, then we could potentially see a path of going to this city, and then down, and then over again, to get that one extra city in a long line. Blue is the final player to build, and they only have blue stock, and currently there is no blue track in the supply, so they actually don't have any way to build any track, so we can now move on to riding the rails. The white player can start this off. After considering their options, they are going to start with this passenger here, and they are going to run it through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the orange links. So this will go up to seven. Then they are going to run it through one, two, three of the yellow links, which doesn't actually help them out, but it does get this over to the red area, which they do get some benefit for, and then they would like to run this as far as they can, so they will go one, two, three, four, five, six times through the red, which pushes this all the way up there. Now, this means that passenger went through six plus seven plus three plus one cities. That is 17 cities total. After that, it's time for the payout. White is going to get 17 plus 7 plus 6 money, which is going to be 30 total. That brings them from 61 up to 91. At the same time, green is going to get 6 times 2 plus 7 plus 3 money, which is 22, and that's a decent amount considering it's not actually their turn. So that is going to bring them from 64 up to 86. Lastly, we will get a payout for this. That will be 6 plus 7 times 2, which is 20 money total, 
bringing us from 73 up to 93. The white player was in a bit of a bind there. They did not want to give too many points to their opponents, but they also did not want to run blue, considering how many blue stocks the blue player has. Perhaps them taking that second blue share was a mistake, but we'll just have to see how things go. White is done, so now the green player can ride the rails. And they are going to do something that is very similar to what we just saw. They are going to move this passenger here through one, two, three, four, five, six of the orange tracks. Then they will go through one, two, three of the yellow. And then they will finish this off going through one, two, three, four, five, six of the red track. That means that passenger went through 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1 cities, which is 16, and that is just one city less than the other route that we saw, which makes sense considering one passenger came from here, and the other one for the white player came from there. So the green player is going to get 16 plus 3 plus 6 times 2 plus another 6 money for this revenue payout. All told, that is 37 money for green, which will bring them from 86 up to 123, and they can track that they went across the 100 line by moving this token forward once. Next up, we are going to get 6 times 2 plus 6 money for this, and that is 18. So we will go from 93 up to 111. In addition to that, the white player is going to get 6 plus 6, or 12 money for that payout. Green is done. So now we can run, and we are going to once again go across the country, but this time from the east to the west. We can start over here and go through one, two, three, four, five of the red cities. Then we will go through one, two, three, yellow. And then we'll finish this up going through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the orange cities. So that passenger went through eight plus five plus three plus one cities which is going to be 17. Then we can get a payout of 17 plus orange times 2 plus 8 times 2 plus another 5. All told, we get 38 money, which will bring us to 149. After that, the green player will get 3 plus 8 plus this 5 times 2, which is another 10. All told, that is 21 money for the green player, bringing them from 123 up to 144. Finally, the white player is going to get 8 plus 5, which is 13, and that will bring them up to 116. That is done, so now it's time for the blue player to ride the rails, and they are starting to worry a little bit about the gigantic amount of money that the rest of us got by working together on this long line. Maybe they should not have gone so singularly into the blue stock. Either way, they are going to try to maximize their blue investment, so they are going to start over here and go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the blue cities. So this will go up to the 8, and then that is just 9 cities total. And then blue will get 8 times 4, which is 32 money, plus another 9. That is 41 money total, which will bring them from 84 up to 125, and that means the blue player is no longer in the lead. In fact, it looks like they are going to be in last place after this, because now the white player will get a payout of 8 times 2, or 16. That will bring them up to 132, and then our one blue stock will get us 8 more money, and that will push us even more into the lead with a current score of 157. We are now done riding the rails, and that went very well for us. It's possible some of our opponents helped us out a little bit too much with our double orange stock, but we'll just have to see how things go. We can adjust the turn order now. We are definitely going last. Then it's going to be the green player, then white, and then the blue player for the first time in a while has the lowest score of all of the players. Well, we can now move into the fifth round of the game where the black railroad is now available. And I think I'm once again going to fast forward through this round and we'll pick things up again at the start of the final round of the game. Well, this round is coming to an end, and as far as turn order is concerned, we are going to be on the right, then the white player, then green, and then blue. And the green player actually intentionally got less points than they could have to make sure they had less than the white player going into the final round of the game. They did that because they wanted to be able to act before the white player when it came to laying track out, and they are going to use that to try and go over here to Brisbane and get that benefit. 
We actually built track towards Perth in this last round, thinking that maybe it would make sense to try and duck under the points of our opponents to then get this 50-point benefit for getting there. But it uh, turns out that we just got too many points for our opponents doing stuff, so we did not even have a chance to duck under, so I figured we just went pedal to the metal and got as many points as we could. So let's enter the sixth and final round of the game. And it's worth noting that no one has still yet started a purple railroad, although a black railroad did get started over there. Now the first thing that we do is grab a new stock, and we get to go first. With this turn order in mind, I think we should probably take this orange stock, because it's the last one. If we don't do this, then we could look over here and see that the green player would be able to build into Perth on their turn. They're the first one with an orange stock who could build, and that would get them 50 money. Currently, green is at 227, and we are at 253. So if green got 50 money from placing that, they would easily eclipse our score. 50 is a gigantic bonus. So if we can't have this 50 money, then I think no one should. So let's go ahead and take this orange token so that there are no more orange trains to be placed out. And in this game, it looks like no one is actually going to make it to Perth. It was really close there. Well, we can take one stock, and there are four of these red tokens left, and I figure let's just go ahead and take another one of these and invest in red. It seems like this area has been consistently lucrative throughout the game. After that, the white player can take a stock, and they've decided to take a black stock, and then finally the blue player can take one, and they are going to grab one of these red stocks here. Next up, it's time to lay track, and the blue player can go first. Now, they have the ability to lay red track, which means they could actually be the one to build into Brisbane, which would be pretty devastating for the green player considering green was trying to set this up and even sacrificed money in the last round to try and make it happen. Fortunately for green, the blue player thinks it's actually more lucrative for them to build out black to gain access to a uh, passenger at one end of a very long line. Considering the blue player has four of this blue stock, they will actually make slightly more money by doing this plan instead of the other one. They are also keeping in mind that the white player invested in black, so the white player is likely to build out black as well to try and uh, do some big runs over here, so they'd like to try and work together. They are going to lay this track over there, and that has connected two more cities to that line. All right, the green player can lay track, and they are absolutely going to lay a long-distance red track onto the map. This is the second to last red track in the game, and when they go over here onto Brisbane, they immediately gain 20 money. So that will bring them from 227 up to 247. It's also worth noting that Brisbane is a city that you can send passengers to, but you never start with passengers on Brisbane or Perth, so you can never begin a run from either of those long-distance cities. Next up, the white player is going to lay five black track. And that has connected a couple more cities into that line. All right, it's time for us to lay track. And our options are yellow, orange, blue, or red. Realistically, that means we could lay yellow or red. And there's only one red token. And I do figure let's place it onto that spot because that will actually increase the potential red run by one extra city. That means we have four more tracks that we can lay. And the only option for us is yellow if we want to. I don't see a reason not to, considering that can bring in another city. So let's go ahead and lay track going up like this. And then when we come back, we can loop that in. Technically, we can lay one more track if we wanted to, but I don't really see a need, so we'll just stick with four. All right, it's time for us to ride the rails for the final time in the game, and the blue player is going to start that off. We are not surprised to see them start over here and go through one, two, three, four, five of the black cities. Then they will go through one orange city, and that connects them up to their blue, where they will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times through those blue links. So blue will go up to nine, and that passenger went through nine plus five plus one plus one, or 16 cities. For the payout, the blue player is going to get 16 money, plus they will get nine times four, or 36 more money for that and they also get five more money for their black share. All told, that is 57 money that blue will get, and that is going to bring them from 209 to 266. 
Next up, the white player is going to get five money for this, and then nine times two or 18 more money. Plus, there is a single orange token down there, so white will get one for that as well. That is 24 money total, which will bring them from 228 up to 254. After that, green is going to get one money for that single orange link, and then we are going to get nine for this blue, and then three more for the orange. That is 12 total for us, bringing us from 253 up to 256. Blue is done, and now the green player can go. Considering they have one orange share compared to our three, they've decided to avoid orange entirely. They are going to start here and go through one, two, three, four, five, six of the yellow links, and then they'll go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the red ones. This passenger went through eight plus six plus one, or 15 cities total, including their starting city. So the green player is going to get 15 money, plus they are going to get 8 times 2, or 16. They will also get 6 times 2, or 12, for those shares there. All told, that is 43 money for the green player, so that will bring them from 248 up to 291. Next up, we will get 6 money, plus 8 times 2, or 16. That is 22 money for us, bringing us from 265 up to 287. Next up, the blue player is going to get 9 money. That'll bring them from 266 up to 274. And then the white player will get 6 plus 8, or 14 more money. So they go from 254 up to 268. The green player is now done. White is next, and they've decided they are going to be helping the blue player out a decent bit. They are going to run this passenger through 1, 2, 3, 4 of the black links then one of the orange, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the blue. Now the blue player over here does technically get more revenue than the white player does from this blue line, but the white player is still interested in gaining more money on their other opponents as well. So that passenger went through nine plus four plus one plus one, which is 15 different cities. After that, the white player is going to get 15 money plus nine times two or 18, They'll get one money for this orange, and then four more money for the black. All told, that is 38 money for the white player. They had 268, so that is going to bring them up to 306. After that, green is going to get just one money for this. We are going to get 9 plus 3, or 12, and that will bring us up to 299. Finally, the blue player is going to get 4 times 9, or 36 money, plus another 4, so that is 40 money total that the blue player got, even though this was the white player's turn to ride the rails. So, the blue player will go up from 274 up to 314. That is done, and now we are the final ones who get to ride the rails. Considering we now have three of the orange stock, I think we should definitely maximize that part of this run. And we've got two red compared to the two and one of our opponents, so running on red is also good. So let's go ahead and move this passenger here. Let's go through one, two, three, four of the red links. And now with the yellow, we have some options. We could go really quickly or we could go slow. We have one yellow stock, so does the white player. Blue does not have any, but green does have two. Now, for every city that we go to, we will gain one revenue, so that means that we would effectively gain two revenue for each extra yellow city, and the green player would also get two, so we would float even with green and gain on white as well as blue, so I think let's just go through as many yellows as possible. In this case, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then finish this out strong with a big orange push. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on that orange track. This will get it all the way over there. If someone had managed to make it to Perth, that would have actually been 9, but that didn't happen. So that passenger saw 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1, or 19 different cities. So we're going to get 19 money plus 8 times 3, which is 24 more. We'll then get 6, and then 4 times 2, or 8 more money on top of that. All told, we get a whopping 57 money from this, which will bring us from 299 up to 356. After that, the blue player is going to get four money for that red, and that is it. 
and then the white player will get 6 plus 8 plus 4 more. That's 18 more for white, so that will take them from 306 up to 324. Finally, the green player is going to get 6 times 2 or 12 money, plus 8, plus 4 times 2 or 8 more. That is 28 money total, and they can add that to their 392 to bring them up to a score of 320. Well, at this point, we are done riding the rails, and that means the sixth and final round has come to an end. And once the game is over, we simply check to see who has the most money, and that player is the winner. It looks like in this case, we won by quite a margin. And then the white player came in second, with the green and blue players coming in after that, relatively close over there. And that has completed a full four-player game of Ride the Rails on the Australia map. Now stick around because I'm going to clear the map off and give you a brief look at what the Canada map looks like on the other side, as well as how it works. The first thing to note is that there are no mountains on this map at all, and there are these red lines that are impassable terrain. So in order to get from this area to that area, you have to go through the tiny gaps that are there on the board. Another thing to note is that Toronto is special. Up to one of each of the six train companies can be in this city. And you'll notice this is the only city on the map with the purple banner, which means the purple train company must start in Toronto. Just like on the backside of this with the Australian map, each of the red, blue, orange, and yellow companies also have their own dedicated starting locations on the map. Toronto does have a couple other things going on with it. When a player begins a train company in Toronto, which would be the purple or black train company, then that player gets two money, and whenever a player places any train into Toronto, that player will get three money. It's worth noting if you start the train in Toronto, you just get the two money, you don't get two plus three. It's also worth noting that in a three-player game, you put one less train down than in the standard version of the game, and there is a linking bonus over here. The first player to link up this city with that one and that one way over there will get eight money from the bank. So those are all of the mechanics. And as far as the overall map is concerned, there is definitely a choke point right over here. And since the game starts off with the red and blue companies being available, well, you can see they are not very close to each other at all. The next company is orange, which is over there. So the red and orange could potentially work together relatively quickly. And then after that, yellow is going to come into the game. So right from the start of the game, the blue company is likely going to be all on their own. And that could stay that way for much of the game. Obviously, once purple comes into the fray, that could connect blue up with a whole bunch of other things going on. And each time you play the game, the way each of these routes will be built out will change how that connection could potentially happen. Well, now that I've explained the Canada map, and obviously the Australia map, since we did a full tutorial on it, I do think this video is now coming to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Ride the Rails. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.